Hello, it's Christy Wilbur here with uh, another video. We're starting a new series here and uh, the name of the series is Explained. So I'm gonna have different projects that I'm gonna work on and I will try to explain as good as I can um, how I'm doing it. So <clears throat> maybe you can be inspired to do some similar project yourself. So this project is called the decorative initial. Uh, for the longest time I wanted to um, make this initial for my son's room uh, to make a little drawing and frame it hopefully if it turns out good and his name is Adrian so obviously that's why I'm gonna work on the letter A. So let me tell you first something about the paper that I'm gonna work on and after that we're gonna go to the design. Um, it turned to be quite dark. Um, I used a lot of layers of paint and I um, called this um, um, way of layering uh, Venetian plaster because uh, you know in some homes people uh, have that kind of a, um, a finish on their walls and they call it Venetian plaster. Uh, how I do this is here I have about four or five layers of paint different colors of paint uh, till I got to this very kind of subtle and turned a little dark uh, color um, so I put the first layer with brush and after that I started using um, I started using where is it uh, a card some kind of it's not this one but some other card that I have around here um, and what I do is I pour a color uh, first I have a base color so I had something kind of beigey as a base color and after that I pour the darker color and what I did uh, the color needs to be the second color needs to be pretty watery. Uh, and I started kind of spreading it out like this so with the card so I made one layer of this let it dry and another layer and another layer so you can definitely try to get some old credit card or any kind of plastic card you have like this and or even a spatula any kind of spatula that you have in the house hardware material and you can just go like this and create this kind of Venetian plaster look. Um, I There's some specks of gold because my third color in the, these four layers, the third color is gold. Um, so the paper that I work on is very thick. It's Stratmore uh, watercolor paper 400 series cold press. And in a way I... Uh, I use it just because I have it around the house. This paper was not supposed to be used for uh, that kind of paint. Um, it's a watercolor paper. It's a very good quality watercolor paper. Um, so if you see 400 series in a Stratmore um, uh, paper, that means that it's a professional quality paper. Um, and Cold press means that it's, it still has a lot of thickness. If you want something really nice and smooth, you have to go with the uh, hot press. But for watercolors, it's nice to have your, your paper to have texture. So cold press is good. Anyways, we're, we're using this paper in a completely different way, not as a watercolor, but I'm using it only because um, that's the paper I found in the studio. And I just don't not go and buy a new paper just for this project. So because it's a little curvy from all the applications, I'm going to tape it down and we're going to start. <clears throat> um, I was always fascinated with the illuminated manuscripts. Um, they're really amazing and if you google illuminated manuscripts you're gonna see this incredible variety of 
letters of, from uh, manuscripts made in the medieval times by monks, mostly in, in monasteries. And uh, they were taking uh, not hours but days and months working on a, on a single letter or on a single page uh, of their manuscripts. So they took uh, the art of lettering to a completely different level. Um, and my letter has, uh, has some inspiration uh, from the illuminated manuscripts, but it's completely made up. I just, just my fantasy letter, let's say. So uh, first I did this uh, design and the, the, the sides of the, of the letter were curved, but I decided that there are way too many curves here and I made a second variation second project, second sketch, and I think this one is a little bit more successful when it comes to this, uh, the, the outside of the letter being very um, straight and everything else being very curvy inside of it. Anyways, that's going to be extremely overly decorated letter. So I'm going to show you the beginning and the end of the project. And... Let's get started. Uh, so in the very middle of my page, I have the only thing I've marked so far is the middle of the, the page, the very middle of the page. This is 11 by 14 size. So the first thing this time I'm gonna, the first thing I'm gonna try to do is create, I really hope you can see here because it's not gonna be very easy to see what I'm drawing, but I'll try my best. As soon as I'm um, I'm absolutely certain about some areas. I'm going to darken them up so you can see them better. So what I'm going to do is, because I love circles, I'm going to place his letter in a circle. And if you watch my other videos, you're going to see that I don't like to work with too much extra rulers or tracers so I'm gonna try my best to do the circle here so that's where my letter is gonna end up being and uh, I will start from right here it's gonna be the very bottom so we'll go up So I'm going to start kind of figuring out the middle of it. Sometimes it's fun to have some of the areas of your letter coming outside of the shape that you created. That can be another really cool effect. Um, Obviously, in the beginning, it's going to be kind of important the two sides of my letter to be pretty much the same size. Okay. So that's pretty much the, the very beginning of it. And I'm going to start building from the top maybe, right here. So like I told you, I decided that I want to have absolutely overly decorated letter. I'm gonna be, go a little crazy here with with ornaments <laughs> but it's gonna be nice. At the end I hope it's gonna turn to be to be good. Okay I'm kind of sure about this part so I'm gonna darken it out so you can see where it is 
if it's hard for you to see because the 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 base my venetian plaster base is pretty dark A long time ago I was absolutely obsessed with another thing um, which is uh, drawing antique columns so they have uh, in this in the ionic style they have this very nice curve this curvy kind of uh, endings so I got a little inspiration from there and here there's gonna be the depth so each one of these little elements is going to have depth too. So now I'm creating this depth. Uh, obviously any letter you like you can make. You can make it for yourself or for somebody else. And um, there are so many letters that you can see online and just, just combine. What I did is combining elements that I like from a lot of different designs um, so that's that's my kind of letter the unique letter for Adrian so right here this line is very important Again, the depth is, is, is something that can give so much more beauty to your work. Here, I'm going to imagine that I see the, the letter from... Um, it's above my horizon. So that's why I'm seeing the, the, the bottom part right here. Because the letter is above my horizon. I decided to add this little heart here for him. So uh, here. again the depth on this side. I shouldn't go too dark. With the with the outside lines, because I might need to erase quite a bit, but I'm gonna work with acrylics. That's all acrylics. I forgot to tell you. That's all acrylic paint. Different types of acrylic paint. So I'm gonna paint on top. I'll color everything with acrylics too. So they're very thick and covering. They're not like watercolors. So. It's all going to be, it's going to be nicely covered. One, two, three, four. I want all of them to have like five. This kind of leafy designs. I want each one of them to have about five. In the middle of it, kind of split it. I'll split it like a like there's going to be another leafy design on top of it right here so this here at the depth of the letter right here and from right here I'll start another curvy leaf. I'll, I'll change it a little bit. I don't like it right in the middle there. So this leaf is going to come right here. And I'll kind of see only the side of it. So I'm going to be changing some of the elements 
as I go. I absolutely love swirls, that's why maybe I even started the letter with extra swirly sides because I absolutely love circles and swirls so that's going to be kind of the predominant element here. But it's good, it's good to have the balance between the between the two the straight lines and the curvy lines otherwise it's gonna be way too much of the same thing <clears throat> so here I'm gonna continue this line down see where I can still see it that's the depth the depth that I see Here's the depth too. Here's the depth. Down here, like I told you, this in this ionic columns they had these swirly elements that I really liked. And that's gonna be something from to end to end the letter down here the depth and again right here the depth I'll try to imagine that I see the very bottom of it right here. Okay, and now on the same exact level. So here I see the depth, but here I don't see the depth because I, I look from this angle, I'll see this depth. So I'm looking from down, from under the horizon and a little bit from the right. So there must be logic in how you draw this um, areas here. this out but let's go down here first I'll try as good as I can to make this two look pretty much the same Okay, so how am I gonna see this part? The direction of this and this line should be pretty much the same. And the depth should be 
pretty much the same. Um, I need to straighten this up later. Okay, and now I'm gonna see again the depth of this one, this one, this one. And here, once I'm done with the depth of the letter and I know how big these spaces are, I'm going to start making another depth, which is like a little, a little edge that you have around the, the whole letter. have one more but tinier one little area here mm, this line is gonna go And whatever I do on this side, I need to do the very same on the other side. Goodness, I see that we already spent quite a bit of time just doing the very basics. And for the very end of this video, I'm going to show you how I finished the whole thing. How it, it's all going to look when, when it's all done. Um, and I really like to have this weaving, I call it, design here. Very often in the illuminated manuscripts, you see these uh, kind of Celtic knots or uh, some other weaving element so I'm gonna keep going with this weaving through the whole through the whole letter I'll try my spaces to be pretty much the same Here's gonna be the little heart which I'm gonna try to center. There's gonna be this little heart design up here. It's really cool to see elements in other letters and just design your own with whatever you want to put in there. That's, that's going to be really fun for everyone to figure out their own design. And if I have the space, I'll make another little area right here. Okay, so that's the beginning of my illuminated uh, decorative, highly decorative um, A. So um, I'm I'm going to show you how it's going to look as soon as I'm done with it. 
Hello again. So after quite a few hours of work, I don't even know exactly how many, um, I finished the initial, the A initial. And I, I think I'm happy with it. I might uh, clean up some of the areas a little bit more, but uh, it's pretty done. Uh, one of my friends saw uh, this uh, painting, little painting, and uh, she said something very funny, I think. She said, oh, this letter has a hat, a belt, and shoes. <laughs> so I realized that uh, she's absolutely right. Um, it turned out that uh, there are some elements that look like something else. I, I didn't even ever realize that. So I just wanted to share really fast a few important things, a um, few tips if you decide to do that yourself. Uh, first, uh, even though I didn't have very thick texture, I will suggest that uh, if you intend to do something with a lot of detail, don't have uh, much texture underneath. Um, because if you have texture in, in your background, your detail cannot work that well. So thicker the texture underneath, less precise your detail is going to be. So that's a very important thing to keep in mind. Uh, second thing about texture. Uh, one, um, I, I just decided, uh, especially in the weaving part right here, um, to go in different directions with the two, um, let's say, strings that are weaved together. So you can see maybe that the gold ones, uh, in the gold areas, my brush strokes go in this direction. And when it comes to this burnt orange, the lines of my brush strokes go in the other direction. So I think that's a little tip that can help you if you do something like that, because that um, increases the sense of of uh, texture and of kind of uh, makes these strings look more real. And uh, the last thing I want to share with you is very, very important. Um, I kept all my uh, warm colors and my lights in the letter. Uh, so I decided I will do warms and lights in the letter and my background is going to be cold colors, very subtle colors, uh, and pretty much dark. Uh, the, the background is going to be dark. So especially when you're working with so many different elements and so many different designs, it's very important to have some kind of a concept how uh, you're going to place your colors. You can do opposite, of course. You can go with dark and cold in here and make very, very light background. There is no one rule about it. You, you just have to kind of a little bit conceptualize because if you have everything everywhere, if everywhere you have um, bold colors, if you, uh, you have lightness everywhere and darkness uh, in all the areas, it's going to be very disjoint and the composition is not going to have a co cohesive look. So I thought that's very important. The one area that I'm still not very happy about, and I'll work a little bit more on maybe, is the thickness of the letter. Uh, I had hard time making sure, uh, making kind of the illusion of the thickness of the letter only because this dark blue and the color of the thickness uh, were coming up to be, uh, were, were turning to be very much the same. So what I did here is, because that's a very cool color, I, I went with something way warmer here. I mixed some browns and golds especially in the area that is closer to the blue. So that's how I can kind of better can separate the thickness of the letter from the background. And I still think there is something to be asked uh, to be improved here. Uh, maybe I will lighten up slightly the very edge. Um, I'm not sure about this, but uh, I still have to work on this a little bit more. So, um, I hope uh, my design is going to inspire you to do something similar because it's really a um, cool project to do and you can make someone very happy if you, even on a smaller scale, if you make something uh, customized for, for someone and I think everyone would love their initial 
um, painted. So that's uh, the the decorative um, initial video. I hope you enjoy it. See you next time. Bye.